Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Fickle Man has a new plan. This time, you are going to be very, very, very expressed. I mean, impressed or depressed. Depends on your point of view. You're going to love this one. This is brand new. This is hot off the press, okay? And uh, what I want to tell you is, let me get out here on the highway where I can do some talking and, and driving, okay? Here we go. So, be that, oh, here we, uh, new plan, Stan. What I'm going to do, you're going to love this. This is so perfect. I don't know why I didn't think of it before, man. I mean, jeez, I was out walking this morning and it just hit me, man, like boom, you know? But here it is. I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to go ahead and buy the new place, but I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to sell my RV, my property, and every, uh, Capitan everywhere. Sell everything. Put it all into cash, okay? All cash. Once I get that done, I've already talked to some sponsors because you're going to love this. Have you ever heard of the CDT, the Continental Divide Trail? Well, it's 3,100 miles that goes from the New Mexico, Mexico border all the way to the Canadian USA border. It's 3,100 miles, and some people it takes six months, but I think I can do it walking in, in, in a month. Why? Well, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. But I've talked with Speedo, the people that make you know, panties for men, basically, and thongs or whatever. But yeah, I'm going to have them make me, I've already talked to them, I talked to them on the phone this morning. They're going to make me a leather thong with some pockets so I can carry me a pocket knife and some string. And I'm not going to take a backpack, I'm not taking any water, no nothing. Uh, I'm going to be like a uh, mountain man, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to do this and, and I'm only going to, I'm going to have a hat, a thong, with pockets, of course, made out of leather, sponsored by Speedo or whoever I can find. They're in the hunt right now. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a, I've already talked to a guy in El Paso that will drive me over to the drop-off point on the New Mexico, Mexico border. There's actually a plaque there where you start the CDT, 3,100 miles, walking with a pocket knife, some string, and my Speedo leather thong with pockets. And yeah, this is, I'm telling you, man, this will work. You think I'm crazy, but I'm not. And and I know you know I think I'm crazy, but that's okay. Having said that, moving along to the rest of the plan or some more of the plan, it isn't completed yet. But they say it normally takes about six months to do the, the entire walk because you know if you walk 20 miles a day for 150 days, then you have made approximately 3,000 miles. Well, bullshit on that. I, I can whip the hell out of that. Why? Well, I figure that I'm going to be running most of the time from wild animals and crap that are out there. <laughs> so I figure, I figure I'm going to cut all that time way down, you know, and, uh, and then I'll be hunting for food and, and all that stuff. And I'm going to take one of those little straws that you, you can filter water with. So that way I don't have to carry any water whenever I find this lovely little stream uh, in the desert. Then I'll just go get me some, uh, get me a good drink, and then go on and on and on. And you see how well thought out this is, because uh, yeah, because oh, I've also there are some funeral homes that have called uh, that would like to get in on this, <laughs> because I'm 77 years old, and they're thinking, well, you know, there's a damn good chance he's not going to come out the other side. And I'd give myself about a zero mm, percent uh, chance of making the 3,100 miles alive. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I just thought that was kind of cute for a morning drive here. Uh, why? Because, uh, you know, you got to have a, a little imagination. You got to throw some dreams in and stuff. But I actually did think about that. I thought, well, shit, why don't you go just walk the Continental Divide Trail? And, uh, and then I thought, well, you know, I'd have to have a pack and some special shoes and all that crap. Well, hell, I can cut all that crap out in a heartbeat. You know what I mean? Just don't have it. Just let the guy drop you off there with some some Crocs and, and uh, some a thong and a pocket knife and away you go. And if you don't make it, tough shit, you know, <laughs> that's the way it is. And then I was going to do the, the Pacific Coast Trail too uh, later. And I was going to do on the Continental Divide Trail, if you go up and then turn around and come back, they call that a yo-yo. And I was going to do a, uh, I was going to do a double yo-yo and uh, that would take me about two years or less. But you know, you, you know, without dreams, the people perish. Okay. With the dreams, people perish. Bottom line, people perish, okay? So forget all the crap about dreaming or not dreaming, just live and die. 
that's it. But having said that, we're out here on the road, uh, just cruising along here, and uh, yeah. But yeah, that would you would that be totally weird? Would I bet I'd get to see the whole thing is I want to get some views. You think some of those videos would go viral? Shit. <laughs> I mean, man. They'd be watching that from all over the world. Yeah, and what I would do, if I could get some good sponsors, you know, I would actually put on a show, you know, like Super Dave used to do. And, uh, you know, they would film me, uh, you know, like appearing to climb mountains and cross deserts and shit for, for about six months. We'd all make a lot of money and live happily ever after. In fact, I think some of these people that, you know, do all these long walks and motorcycle rides, and stuff, I have a feeling that they have sponsors and what you're seeing is, is a, ma a made-for-TV movie. You know, I, I just suspect that. Is that true? No, but I, I, I think about how easily that could be done. You know, if you had enough money and you know people following behind you, so if you stumbled and fell, there'd be somebody run up there and pick you up. Or if you needed a drink of water, they would just say cut, and you get a drink of water, and then we go on. Yeah, could that happen on YouTube? Shit, in a heartbeat. Hell, it almost happens now, you know. I know I'm eating ice and all that crap. It's a cold morning. I'm sitting here eating ice. But it's that soft ice, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking about being on the Continental Divide Trail. But actually, you know, when I was working, or I say working, I volunteered at Gila Cliff Dwellings, which is in uh, New Mexico, north of Silver City, New Mexico. The Continental Divide Trail comes pretty close to there. And some of the guys would come over to uh, the uh, uh, Gila Cliff dwellings to uh, to re resupply and drink, get water and stuff. And anyway, I got to talk to several of them passing through there. And uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. I mean, they actually walk about 20 miles a day, man, uh, to, to make it from point A to point B on time. So they beat the snow and stuff. Yeah, and, and all that crap I told you about a yo-yo, that up and back, that's true. There's people that do that. But, you know, they, they're actually, they're not, none of them were wearing Crocs that, that I, I, I don't think. And none of them had a leather Speedo thong on them. Or at least I didn't see them. And, uh, but, yeah, but they do resupply there, and then they resupply at another place a little further north uh, called Pie Town. Uh, it, it's, uh, not too far. Well, it's west of Socorro, New Mexico, about 80 miles, I guess. But anyway, what's that got to do with the Continental Divide Trail? Not much. But you know, that that's the things you can do. You know, you can you you can just change everything. You know, you know what I mean? You got a chalkboard uh, with your life on it, and and uh, you know all that stuff's up there written that you've done in the past. And you, know, you forget that crap. You can't change that. But there's nothing written in the future. Okay. There's nothing that that side of the board is basically blank, if, except for a few dreams and whatever you come up with. But you fill in that blank side. You fill that in, okay? And uh, you've seen what I've done. A little bit of, a little, well, I haven't done that much. I mean, I haven't done anything really exciting. I mean, you know, I haven't climbed a mountain or or, uh, or gone hang gliding or, or you know, uh, you know a, a lot of things, you know. So, you know, that that's all open to me. And you, I, I tell you what, that, that really appeals to me, but I'm not going to do it. Uh, but sailing, you know, sailing on a sailboat uh, appeals to me. But number one, I get seasick. And, and, and even the people that sail on sailboats get seasick. It's not like, you know, e e even sailors get seasick in, in heavy seas. You know what I mean? But, you know, but that's kind of a, an RVing lifestyle. You know, you're, you're, you're like, uh, you're boondocking when you're out there on the ocean, kind of on your own. And then you come into the, quote, RV parks or the mar marinas and uh, anchor and go wash clothes and just all that stuff. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, similarities between uh, sailing and RV. In fact, there's a, a, group of, a couple called the Winds, W-Y-N-N-S, that uh, they, they were RVers. They had a, I think they had a big motor home. They must have a lot of money. I don't. I guess they do pretty good. But then they bought them a sailboat, and they're fixing to buy another one. I think it's about a quarter million bucks or whatever it is, or more. And uh, yeah, it's a catamaran, I think. But you know, it's. It, but you know, you have to be uh, really a handyman person type, and both of you need to be handyman t types 
because if you have electrical issues or mechanical issues or whatever and you're out in the ocean uh, you can't dial 1-800-CODE-FIX because there ain't nobody you know kind of like boondocking so what's that got to do with anything well it has a lot to do with stuff folks what I'm telling you is there's that chalkboard imagine that right now. probably most of you can't even remember what a blackboard was but uh, it was a thing in a classroom where teachers would take some stuff with a white stuff called chalk and write on the board you know they don't do that anymore I don't think but but if you are right, how about this imagine a blank computer screen with the left side but it's split split screen and the left side it's got all this stuff all filled in and the right side of the screen is blank well that's where your future is is in that blank side and uh and, and I think about that, you know, because you, you got one shot, man, you know, there, and there's no rules. There, there's absolutely no rules. There's no, no, if you get out there, if you do something that you just jumped out and do, uh, and it screws up or it just didn't work out like you thought it would, well, shit, so what? I mean, do something else. I mean, you, you learn that didn't work, you know, so try something else. So, and that's kind of what I'm looking at now. You know, instead of just going back and forth from home base to home base, you know, I thought, hell, do something different, man. Add a little, quote, variety to your life, you know, a little spice, you know. You know, go somewhere, you know. Like, where? I don't know. But, you know, the, 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 there's, the, of course, the dream and the reality. You know, that side of the board is blank, and then you start filling it in, and you start looking at it, and it's not what you thought it was. And then again, it can be... Uh, very exciting. I noticed this morning that it was colder in Quartzsite, Arizona than it is here in Brackettville, Texas, Fort Clark Springs, where I have a home base, Texas, and southwest Texas near Del Rio, Texas. And, and it, as you can see, the border issues, this is a, a, a two-lane road in the middle of nowhere, and, you know, they're talking about all the illegals coming across, and then, the, oh, they're just, oh, they're everywhere. You can't even drive down the highway for, for running into them folks i've driven ever back road in this area i ain't seen anybody except the border patrol and dps now there there may be illegals out there squatting in that brush i do not know and i do not care if i was if i was in mexico guatemala el salvador or colombia and i was starving to death and this was the land of opportunity then by god i'm headed there just as quick as my little legs will carry me you know you know and then why don't i do it legally because i ain't got no money you know that's why I'm that's why I'm starving to death. But you can see for yourself, there's nothing happening here. Nothing. We're right now from the Rio Grande River that divides Texas and Mexico, we're probably direct line twenty miles, twenty five miles max. Because the river kind of curves around. Yeah, no kidding, guys. Well, there's nothing here, man. Not a thing. You don't see nothing. I don't see. I don't see nothing. I see. You see those big fences on the right? Those eight-foot fences or whatever they are. I'd say they're eight feet. Those are game fences. Those aren't to keep things out. It's to keep stuff in. You know, they have exotic game. You know, for hunting or deer and stuff out there. And they make a lot of money having people come and lease uh, their land for hunting. Yeah, they make a lot of money. Lot, L-O-T, lot. So here we are near the border. And as the television news has been reporting, I see absolutely no one. Ta-da. Oh, and the reason, you know, you, you hear about law enforcement agencies asking for more and more people to, 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 uh, patrol and do that and I'm sure that it's legitimate that you know but you know if you're if you're in an industry or a, a, you know you, you want more you know you don't want less and you would never uh, call the government on the phone and say look man there ain't shit going on down here you know you take all these people back you know or we're gonna lay them off you know that, that ain't gonna happen you, know, you don't build an empire by getting smaller you build an empire by getting bigger you know and that's what it's all about, you know, a little ego and power and stuff. And it's fun, though, just drive down the highway talking. I just love this shit, man. I got me a Diet Dr. Pepper with some big red in it this morning. I thought that was a big treat. 
and then I've got me some dark chocolate almonds and stuff. And man, I'm just cruising along here at 35 miles an hour. Isn't that nice? And not a car coming or going. You got it? Is that good? Shit. You can't do this anywhere in the world, Harley. You know? No, this is my kind of life. And I live out, I have that place in Capitan. Yeah, I'm working. On, I am actually working on a plant, but it doesn't have anything to do with the CDT or the Pacific Coast Trail or PCT and all that stuff. I mean, it would be a hell of an adventure, and I'd probably get at least 100 views. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't think I want to do that. So, yeah, but what else could I do? I mean, I'm thinking about I do that. I just walk down, and, you know, when I'm walking like I'm driving now, of course, I'm talking to you guys. You're hearing what I'm thinking. Uh, you know, there's so many. I mean, you know, I could, I could leave here tomorrow in my motorhome and go where? Hell, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Why go? And then that's the question. See, that's always the other question. You know, why do anything? You know, are you not contented with where you are? No, I am contented where I am. Well, then why in the hell you want to go anywhere? I don't know, man. I don't know that I do. You know, I'm just thinking out loud. No te calientes, plancha. You know, so, yeah, but you know, what are the options? You know, I've got a, a, a reservation in Goliad, at Goliad State Park, the middle of February, and uh, I got it for four days. I may, I may do that. I, I, I might. Uh, but if you, it's only it's one thing good about Texas is if you cancel a reservation at a state park, it's only ten bucks. Okay, you lose, if you had you know a week reserved, uh, they charge you ten bucks to cancel. You know that's not bad. Now in New Mexico, uh, they have a good deal on their in their park system. But if you make a reservation, they have a twelve dollar reservation fee. Plus, if you decide to leave, they charge you twelve dollar. Uh, uh, cancellation fee. So if you reserve the spot for one day and you wanted to cancel, it's going to cost you cost you twelve dollars going in and twelve dollars getting out. It cost you twenty four dollars. And if you have a New Mexico State Park pass, it it, it would have only cost you four dollars anyway. So here we go, guys, out here in the wilderness of Texas, sort of old brush country. And I'm trying to, I don't know, man. I'm just one of those fickle guys that that y'all have identified in the universe and pick on. Y'all like to pick on old Rusty. Do you pick on pickles? Do you pick on fickle people? Sure you do. Everybody does. I do. Why? Well, that's what you're supposed to do. You gotta pick on pickle people. It's part of our genetic makeup. Anything that's different, we have to destroy it. You know? So what do we got going, guys, right now? Well, I just finished the Continental Divide Trail in my mind, and uh, it was a little rough. I got several thorns and stickers and bear bites and stuff. No, that, but, well, that would you, you, there's no way. You, if I actually did that, I'd be dead in a in five days. I <laughs> mean, you know, there's two houses there on the right that burned all the way to the ground. Well, how? Rude. I think it was old barns. I don't think it was houses. Yeah, you see the traffic on this road. Have y'all seen a car yet? No. Is there a car behind me? No. Nothing, guys. Nut. N o p i n. Nut. There's a bird. And there's not many of those out here. We haven't seen any deer. Sometimes you'll see deer out here, but there's a lot of. They raise goats out here, uh, sheep out here, a few cattle. But you can see that there's not a lot of vegetation for the animals to feed on. It's pretty dry. If you want to make money out here and you own property, you let them put a pipeline across your property and you make a few dollars. Or if you're lucky and they discover oil and gas, then you sit back with a long cigar and uh, think and listen to your bank account grow. So, ladies and gentlemen, old fickle man here is going to end this video before y'all, I hear y'all snoring. I mean, you know, <laughs> shit. I hear that. I hear that yawning in the background there. These are exciting videos, guys. Shit. I mean, <laughs> get out of here, man. So, we'll uh, pull in here and um, uh, I'll end the video. Well, yeah, there's no cars. I don't have to worry about cars. Anyway, guys, thumbs up. Carpe diem. Carpe diem means seize the day in Latin. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye-bye.
buy anything you want anytime but if you think about it use the Amazon link in the description of all my videos why because it doesn't cost you a penny just click on the link and go to Amazon buy whatever you want this is Cox County JD Cox branch right here I'm not kidding you see that kind of neat huh anyway ladies and gentlemen enjoy your life keep your health bye bye